A group known as the Reagan Battalion conducts opposition research for the Republican Party, and usually what they do is they will dig up these old videos from the 80s or the 90s and expose particular Democratic Party politicians. Now, I should put expose in quotes because the research, you know, that they do doesn't really yield the most effective results. And I think that they believe what they're exposing is going to be more of a bombshell than it is in actuality. Now, one of their main targets is Bernie Sanders. And the problem with what they found on Bernie Sanders is that it doesn't actually hurt Bernie Sanders. Um, anything that they've managed to dig up on Bernie shows that he's way cooler than even Bernie supporters thought. And there's even been speculation on Twitter that this group actually is secretly like a pro-Bernie group because of the things that they're finding and releasing. They're not bombshells. They are usually something that helps Bernie Sanders and makes young people love him even more, uh, as I alluded to. Now, they recently released a new video that is supposed to be a bombshell. And this might be my favorite yet because it truly shows that Bernie Sanders was and still is but always was a badass. Take a look. How can you practically change that very uneven distribution? Well, I think you can change it politically. I think you change it through tax, tax laws. I think you change it through public ownership of significant parts of the economy. <laughs> I love that. It makes Bernie look amazing. And look, <laughs> I get that they're trying so hard because this is all that they've got. But this is not going to hurt Bernie Sanders. I can assure you that this is not going to hurt Bernie Sanders. A lot of people who watch that won't even know what they're supposed to be outraged by. But according to their tweet, there's two reasons why you should be outraged primarily. Uh, the first reason is that this interview was conducted by foreign media. Ooh. And the second reason is because he calls for a significant portion of the economy to be owned by the government. Now, when I think of government ownership of public property, I think of the public owning that. Because if we are living in a democracy and we elect officials to represent us, then we own these things, right? So just off the top of my head, I can think of a number of things that I believe we should own. Healthcare. There should be no private ownership of health insurance. We should be the ones in charge of that. Um, education. The military, right? I mean, just with those three sectors, you have a significant portion of the economy. And we haven't even gone further than most other developed countries yet. So, I mean, what I would like is to go further than what I think modern day democratic socialists um, or I should say social Democrats propose, like I believe we should nationalize American oil companies. These fossil fuel companies, they put profit over the planet and obviously, that's not great if we want to have a planet to live on. That's not okay. So we need to nationalize them. They're destroying the planet, killing all of us. And on top of that, we need to nationalize defense contractors because we should not make war a profit-making venture, right? That shouldn't be something that you profit off of. There shouldn't be no money motivation or incentive there. So we nationalize that. And I mean, then we're just leaving things on the table that are actual commodities, right? I, I'm fine with video games being produced by, you know, uh, private companies. That's fine. Although I would argue that, um, you know, if you took out that profit motive of even video games, they'd probably be better. If you don't uh, know why that is, watch Jim Sterling. He talks about how microtransactions and capitalism has essentially killed a lot of video games. But nonetheless, I'm fine if that's, you know, something that is owned by private corporations. What we're really talking about here. Um, are things that are crucial to our survival, right? Healthcare, education is incredibly important. So those things should absolutely be nationalized and owned by the government. And, you know, if it's owned by the government, that means it's owned by the people. So this isn't controversial. This video does nothing to expose Bernie Sanders. It doesn't turn his supporters off to him. In fact, it had the opposite effect because as you can see by some of the comments here, Cristo Avali says, good find guys. Matt Lex says, hell yeah, bitch. Benjamin Dixon says, an entire mood. Thank you for spreading the word. Tanya Singh says, fuck yes. Parker Malloy says, sounds great, guys. Thanks for sharing. Winkle says, you guys make the best Bernie Booster videos. Thanks. <laughs>
<laughs> and I had pretty much the same reaction. Now I scrolled through that thread and I think I could only find one tweet that was anti-Bernie. And that, of course, got ratioed into oblivion. But as you can see, you know, as I kind of scroll through this thread here, it genuinely made almost every single person who saw this video like Bernie Sanders that much more. Now, obviously, people who already supported Bernie Sanders were brigading this thread, duh. Um, and I don't think that the Reagan battalion expected this to hurt Bernie um, in terms of, like, the people who already support him. Of course, they're trying to appeal to centrists who are afraid of socialism. But the problem with that narrative is that the socialism is scary card has been overplayed too much. I mean, you overplayed that during the Obama years when Obama was a centrist. His policies were quintessential neoliberal policies. And yet you guys still not only called him a socialist, you called him a communist. So you overplay that card and now it has no meaning. When you say socialist, people don't take you seriously anymore. It's like the boy who cried wolf. You keep saying everything is socialist and now nothing is socialist as a result. And also a problem with that narrative, another problem for you with that narrative is that, you know, the portion of the electorate who will make or break the 2020 general election, younger people, they don't care about socialism. If anything, they like socialism. In fact, a new poll found that 7 out of 10 millennials would, in fact, vote for a socialist candidate and view socialism favorably. So, fear-mongering is not going to help you win. You actually have to propose policies, because if Bernie's the nominee, Donald Trump just bloviating about random bullshit and fear-mongering about immigrants isn't going to work. He's going to have to actually propose at least one, maybe two policy solutions that would have a demonstrable impact on the lives of ordinary Americans and not just his donors and elites who he has given tax cuts to. Um, but nonetheless, I really genuinely hope that the Reagan Battalion continues to dig up these old videos about Bernie Sanders because I think that this is going to help make him more popular. It's kind of like the Trump effect, right? Anything that the media thought was a bombshell against Donald Trump ended up not having any effect on him. But with these uh, types of videos, not only are they not a bombshell, they're helping Bernie Sanders because the people who already love him love him more because of what you are exposing. So keep it up. I'm enjoying them, certainly, and I know a lot of my viewers are too. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.